Did you know that today, well, the day that I'm launching this video anyway, is the 10th anniversary of Pacific Rim's K-Day? The day the Breacher first reared his ugly head and attacked San Francisco, ushering in the era of the Kaiju Wars. I think that needs to be commemorated, don't you? When I think that the original Pacific Rim came out 10 years ago, I often have to pinch myself to make sure I'm not having some kind of psychotic episode. But nope, a whole decade. Now you guys know how much I love monster and robot stuff, and no movie has brought kaiju and mechs together in the way that the original PR did. So to celebrate the 10 year anniversary of Pacific Rim, I thought I'd take a look at every single Jaeger in the franchise. Or at least try to, because there are a lot of them. And if this video does well, I'll do something similar for every single kaiju. But you know, let's see how it goes. So here, I'm gonna cover the comics and the games too, which I will be honest, I have never played before. So I toyed with the idea of doing a power ranking as those videos tend to do quite well, but there's quite a few of those videos out there already. So I think I'm gonna organize mine by mark. As you'd expect, each different generation of Jaeger is a different mark, with the technology increasing sometimes quite rapidly between the generations. There's quite a few that don't have a mark for whatever reason, and I'm gonna tackle those as I go. This one might be quite a long one, guys, so make yourselves comfortable, hit like on the video, subscribe if you're new, and make sure you've checked out the giveaway that I'm doing. There's a haul of stuff you can win, and there's some Pacific Rim bits and bobs in there as well. Just a little thank you for 50k subscribers. All right. Let's start with the one that started it all, and the first ever working Jaeger prototype, Brawler Yukon. This one was featured mostly in the comic Tales from Year Zero, a story about Dr. Jasper Schoonfeld and Caitlin Lightcap, who build this prototype before realizing that the neural load is too much for just one person, so they come up with the drift. Launched in 2015, Brawler Yukon looks a lot less humanoid than the Jaegers that followed with its short stubby legs and bladed arms. To me, it's part of the evolutionary chain from tanks to say like armored core walking mechs to this to then humanoid Jaegers. And of course, it's fairly basic compared to the future generations. It can claim the credit for the first ever Kaiju kill and took down two Kaiju that we know of, first Karloff, then Kamisan, before being destroyed at some unknown point in time. During its test run, it was piloted by Adam Casey, who had a seizure because of the mental load. And throughout its service, it was piloted by Caitlin Lightcap and her lover bun Sergio D'Onofrio. <laughs> Launched later in the same year, the Russian Cherno Alpha was featured pretty heavily in the movie. Well, I mean, compared to some of the other Jaegers on this list, at least. It was one of the most distinctive Jaegers ever. This sort of bucket head that it's got is actually a thick layer of armor that, that protects its most vital components. And actually isn't its head at all, when you consider that its con pod is right here in its chest. When you think of it that way, it really looks like just a robot with a nuclear chimney stack on its head. It was one of the most heavily armored Jaegers ever, which also contributed to it being one of the slowest. Its con pod was was located in its chest and didn't have any ejection or escape systems, meaning that this Jaeger either won the battle or died fighting. It packed a wallop too, with it being equipped with these devices called roll of nickel cylinders, which spooled up to increase the pressure behind its massive punches and released so much power that its punches would shake the surrounding environment. This is as well as his arms being spring loaded as we saw in the movie when he blammed Otachi in the kisser. Another thing I didn't know was that his arms were armed with Tesla cells, meaning that he could discharge a huge electric blast as its punches make contact with a kaiju. So it would try to get both fists on either side of a kaiju's head to fry its brain. It's also equipped with shoulder mounted turbines that can double up as flamethrowers to belch searing pain onto enemies across short and medium distances. It also must have had a decent sound system in the con pod because according to the novelization, the crew would listen to Ukrainian hard house in there. Cherno was deployed to protect the Siberian section of the Kaiju defense wall and was the reason the wall went unbreached for six years. It killed at least six Kaiju too, some of them being Wraith, a beast called KM-24, Tyrannus, and Atticon, which all featured in the Pacific Rim novel before the last of the T-90s was eventually killed in the movie by Leatherback and Otachi. Outmatching every other Mark I, you could argue that this guy was even more powerful than some of its successors. Coyote Tango, Stacker Pentecost's faithful juggernaut that he piloted with Tasman Savior, who would later die from radiation poisoning. You see, they didn't realize at the time that the nuclear cores that powered these giants leaked harmful radiation that probably would have killed Stacker as well had he not died in the Battle of the Breach. 
Anyway, Coyote was a Japanese Jaeger launched in 2015 and killed Onibaba and Itak. And during the fight with Onibaba, Tasmin blacked out, forcing Stacker to become the first pilot to ever control a Jaeger solo. After the battle with Onibaba, Coyote was retired because of its leaky core, but reinstated in emergency circumstances when Tacit Ronin was unable to hold its position against the fearsome Itak. Coyote managed to keep the Kaiju at bay until Tacit's pilots recovered and got back into the fight. Had Coyote not intervened, Itak would have decimated the shoreline, but the damage sustained to Coyote meant that it wasn't able to take part in Tacit's fight against Ragnarok shortly after. It was built to be faster and more maneuverable than, say, Cherno Alpha, and unlike its Russian counterpart, it can hold its own against the quicker Kaiju. And aside from Cherno, it was the longest surviving Mark I. It boasts twin long-range ballistic mortar cannons to damage Kaiju from afar. These were supported by a forearm-mounted retractable energy caster with five modes of modulation. This weapon in particular being considered highly experimental at the time, and I'm guessing went on to evolve into the plasma caster used by Gypsy Danger, and I think um, Saber Athena had one, right? Kyoji Tango was actually repaired and put back into service with a new crew who may have only lasted one battle. Coyote Tango met her end at the hands of a kaiju called Saramander in Hawaii, but according to Travis Beecham, it went down valiantly, of course. Another little-known Mark I was Tango Tasmania from the Pacific Rim novelization. That one was manufactured in Anchorage, along with Romeo Blue, who we'll talk about next. Now, when Travis Beecham was asked about this guy, he said that the naming convention didn't allow for two Jaegers to both have the name Tango, so there was some mistake going on there somewhere. Beyond all this, and the fact that it was destroyed some way, some when, somehow, not much is known about Tango Tasmania. But let's talk about Romeo Blue, which could technically be called the first American Jaeger, as Yukon Brawler was funded by the UN and an international coalition, so it wasn't assigned to one particular country. Romeo Blue was rolled out to combat hardship when that threatened to make landfall. It managed to beat hardship by ripping a part of a bridge out and using it as a melee weapon. And as a result of its victory, the pilots and Jaeger became revered and celebrated as the hero worships of pilots began to spread, and the name Romeo Blue became legendary. It was chalked up as having two kaiju kills before it was killed when an unknown kaiju ripped its arm off and smashed through the compod with it. It was also involved in the fight against the kaiju called Septid that resulted in nearly 40,000 human deaths, but I'll talk more about that later. As one of the early Jaegers, it was one of the slowest, but it still had a fair amount of offensive capability with an emphasis on long-range attack, including what's known as a Gatling chest, which it would use as its main range weapon. The distinctive fin in the middle of its chest is apparently to protect the Conpod from damage, although that didn't seem to help much in its final battle, as I just said. It had its arm ripped off, was then forced through the Conpod. But you know what? That wasn't the end for Romeo Blue. If you want to know what became of it, specifically what became of its head, you're going to have to wait till later in the video. One that I'd never heard of before, having never played the game, is Atlas Psycho. Again, breaking Travis Beecham's rule that two Jaegers couldn't share the same name, given that Atlas Destroyer would come along later in Pacific Rim the Black. So this necklace scuba diver looking guy was in Breach Wars and was armed with two shoulder mounted Gatling guns and two wrist mounted cannons that could fire an energy beam from its reactor. Next up, Horizon Brave, a Chinese Jaeger that just oozes old school character. You get a glimpse of him in the movie's opening prologue, him being one of the earliest Jaegers built, alongside Coyote Tango and Romeo Blue. It racked up two kaiju kills before being totaled in 2019 in Lima, in Peru. Its most distinctive feature were these two cryo cannons mounted on its shoulders, which could not only blast out a huge frozen blast, but also power its melee attacks, notably a sub-zero sucker punch and what was known as a flash freeze. It was also on the cover of Tales from Year Zero fighting Meathead. Anyway, I wanted to finish the Mark I section with my personal favorite, perhaps of all of the Jaegers, and that's the first ever Japanese Jaeger Tacit Ronin, which took down three kaiju. Again, this one was shown very briefly in the movie's prologue, but was featured more in Tales from the Drift, where it was called upon to fight Itak, and eventually manages to cut that beast in half with these massive retractable blades, called Fang Blades. It then had to fight Ragnarok, even though it was heavily damaged, and although it managed to kill Ragnarok eventually with its signature splitting in half move, it leaked enough radiation to kill its pilots, the Jessops. Although the Jaeger itself would be repaired and returned to active duty until it was broken in half in a battle with an unspecified kaiju, following which its chassis was moved to the burial ground for all wrecked Jaegers, Oblivion Bay. 
Tacit was one of the first Jaegers built for speed and maneuverability, and as such was fairly lightly armoured, but it did have a series of jets mounted on its back to thrust it forward in bursts. As well as those terrifying blades, it also had a chest cannon for ranged attacks, but its speciality was definitely close range combat, and as I said, quite probably, this one is my favourite Jaeger design ever. A lot of the other Mark 1s are kind of old school in their design language, but this guy is still really futuristic, and I really like it. Before we completely move on to the Mark IIs, let's talk about Victory Alpha, whose mark was never actually specified, but my suspicion is that it was also a Mark I, just based off it on its look and its spec. There's also a chance it was a Mark II, but my money is on Mark I. It's a Japanese Jaeger that appears in Tales from the Drift, and helped in the fight with Ragnarok. It was overpowered when Ragnarok brought out its third set of arms, and Victory's pilots were forced to eject. It had energy weapons under each wrist, but not a lot about it is known beyond that. All right, before we start Mark II, just want to just want to make sure you guys have checked out my gaming channel. Play through Transformers Devastation, then War for Cybertron, which I'd never played before, and then I replayed Fall of Cybertron, which was probably the best Transformers game ever. I'm thinking about doing Titanfall next, and then maybe Armored Core when that comes out later this month. All right, okay, interlude over. All right, Mark IIs. Let's start off with Diablo Intercept. It's a Mark II from Chile and was launched in 2016 and was tasked with defending the coastline from Medellin to Patagonia, from a shattered dome in Lima, Peru. In the uprising novel called Ascension, Diablo is partnered with Romeo Blue and Puma Real, who we'll talk about more in a moment, to protect against the kaiju Septid. And all these Jaegers weren't able to stop Septid from reaching the shore and killing itself, releasing a devastating toxin in the process, which kills 20,000 innocent people upon initial contact, and then infects another 15,000 who would slowly die painful deaths over the coming weeks and months. Diablo had bulky flamethrowers that could fire these shells called Hell Bolts that were filled with napalm and could coat a kaiju in flaming liquid after exploding upon impact. But other than that, not a hell of a lot is known about it. As I mentioned, another Mark II involved in the Septid attack was Puma Real from Panama, and all three of these guys attempted to surround Septid to prevent it making landfall. Puma Real was armed with missile launchers that could fire eight missiles, and they were early versions of the anti-kaiju missiles used by Striker Eureka. It had retractable arms, with two retractable claws on both arms and it could also rotate its waist an entire 360 degrees. Another Mark II that we know even less about is Solar Prophet. Apart from its mark and the fact that it was stationed in Lima, this one is kind of a mystery. It was classed as a Vanguard class Jaeger in Pacific Rim Breach Wars and was seen to carry this you shall not pass staff. Breach Wars also featured Aftermath Elite, Dead Reckoner, Exo Starfall, Phantom Excalibur and Shock Devil. And there was also a Russian Mark II called Eden Assassin, stationed in Vladivostok with Cherno Alpha. Again, not much in the way of detail known about this guy. It could be that Lucky 7 is a Mark II, as we know it was deployed in 2019 to fight a Category 4 Kaiju with Gypsy Danger and Horizon Brave. It was one of Herc Hansen's early assignments. Let's move on to Mark III. And of course... You gotta start with Gypsy Danger, don't you? Whose exploits are the stuff of legend. There's an action figure of this dude included in my giveaway haul, so make sure you check out that video. Launched in 2017, Gypsy was tasked with defending Alaska from kaiju incursions. It first came up against Yamarashi further down the coast in Los Angeles, which was the first of four kills in four years. It then went up against Knifehead in 2020, which resulted in catastrophic damage and the death of pilot Yancey Beckett, forcing his younger brother Rally to become one of the few pilots to pilot solo as he manages to discharge a plasma blast at point blank range into the kaiju. Jew's face. He's then able to get the Jaeger back to shore to facilitate retrieval and eventual repair. But Gypsy was actually sent to Oblivion Bay at this stage as the government was about to scrap the Jaeger program in favour of the wall. But Stacker, um, you know, commandeered Gypsy and sent it to be refit, a repair program led by Mako Mori and Tendo Choi. It was here that it was fitted with wrist-mounted chainsaws, made from a super-hardened steel obsidian alloy, meaning that they could either be used as whips or pulled taut to be used as swords. These added to its existing armaments and equipment, including elbow rockets, two plasma casters that would not only blow a hole in kaiju hides, 
but was also hot enough to instantly cauterize the wound to prevent highly toxic kaiju blood, known as kaiju blue, from spraying everywhere. It also has these cooling vents called O8FS Oceanic Cooling Vents that channel seawater through Gypsy's coolant system. Now I'm no engineer, but I'm thinking these are to keep the temps down whilst the systems are having to push harder against the seawater while Gypsy is wading through. I don't know if these are actually needed while Gypsy is on land. I personally think that the water in its cooling system probably doesn't need to be constantly replaced as movement is generally easier. Ah, uh, actually no, this is one of the things on my mind. Anyway. Elsewhere, as we saw, its turbine can release a jet blast which is hot enough to sear through kaiju hides. But of course, this is a kind of a measure of last resort, like, like ideally I'm sure the pilots wouldn't allow the kaiju to get this close. But if it ever does, like it burn all the way through Category 5 Slatten. It's also got jets in its back which allow short leaps and bursts to enhance maneuverability and weight and momentum to its melee attack. Gypsy Danger has nine confirmed kaiju kills. Yamarashi, Knifehead, Leatherback, Otachi, Raiju, Slatten, and of course, it saved the whole of our dimension by sacrificing itself to destroy the breach. The next prominent Mark III would be Atlas Destroyer, which was originally launched in 2017 before being retired and repurposed as a training Jaeger, a process which saw it stripped of its offensive weaponry and fitted with a training AI known as Loa. During Operation Blackout, which was the PPDC shutting down of all comms and burying of all tech considered expendable, Atlas was thought destroyed, but remained intact within its hangar in a base known as Shadow Basin. It was rediscovered by the Travis siblings and went on to carry the kids across the Australian continent, fraught with roaming kaiju including copperhead, acid quills and many other dangers. It's eventually killed when the cultists known as the Sisters of the Kaiju release the Category 6 Breacher which totally demolishes the training Jaeger and it has to self-destruct to vaporize the kaiju and safeguard the kids. <laughs> Armaments wise, we know that it was originally fitted with an arsenal of missiles and it was later retrofitted with Chaos and Nemesis's arm, complete with saber chain which was made of a vanadium steel and a spiked barbed tip. And by what we see here, it was clearly able to pull the full weight of a Jaeger. There was a Mexican Jaeger called Matador Fury, and I'm not sure where this guy appeared, but apparently he was cut from the movie. He was launched in 2017 and piloted by two criminals who could earn their freedom if they piloted the Jaeger one last time. He was mentioned in the Aftermath graphic novel when they were talking about which wrecked Jaegers were kept at Oblivion Bay. So that's obviously where his remains ended up. A Mark III called Chrome Brutus from Canada was piloted by cousins of Inuit descent. But beyond that, and the fact that its status is written up as being destroyed, not much else is known about it. Then we have Shaolin Rogue from China, which lined up next to Crimson Typhoon and Horizon Brave, both of which will get talked about later. But same thing, launched in 2017, written up as destroyed, not much else is known. Then we have Vulcan Spectre, which was Australia's first Jaeger. This one fought Mutavor alongside Echo Saber. And I guess neither of them were a match for Mutavor because Echo is ripped from its head to its torso and Vulcan is smashed to the point of destruction. Mutavor then went on to destroy a section of the anti-kaiju wall before it was finally stopped by Striker Eureka. Vulcan Spectre had three confirmed kills, Faux-Face, Spidenjackal, and one called Vermin, and uses armaments including an atomic drill to bore into a creature's head, and also had an arm-mounted cannon and chest missiles. But it mainly used close combat tactics for most of its combat career. Its remains were seen in the graphic novel Aftermath in, in the Santa Monica Scrapyard, when its former pilot, a washed-up Josh Griffin, is recruited by Mech Sar to salvage Jaeger parts. Right, on to Mark IV, let's start with what I would say is probably the most famous as it did have a fairly prominent role in the original movie, the Chinese Crimson Typhoon. Launched in 2018, Crimson is a unique triple pilot system that uses triplets to sync the movement and weapons of an unparalleled machine that uses 50 diesel engines per muscle strand, as Stacker puts it. And it does this in such a way that it gives an unmatched fluidity, somewhat akin to a martial artist. Its most distinctive feature is of course its third arm, which can make its fingers into these saw blades that it uses for its trademark thundercloud formation attack. But it also has these special shock absorbers and dampers that allow for better balance on any kind of terrain, as well as a labyrinth of balance plates in its feet, which are constantly calculating thousands of micro adjustments per second to give this juggernaut the best balance of any Jaeger so far. It's pretty flexible too, being able to rotate its torso a full 360 degrees, perform high kicks and lift its body to perform flips. 
It has a plasma caster too, although I don't remember seeing that being put to use in the movie, and it's racked up seven official kills before being destroyed by Otachi. This guy loves Crimson Typhoon so much that he made himself his own cosplay suit. And a pretty good one too. Wait, he got married in it? Horizon Bravo was a Mark IV from Pacific Rim the Black that was launched in 2018 that, that participated in the Uprising War in a battle that included Valor Omega, November Ajax, and Titan Redeemer, during which Horizon Bravo was presumably destroyed. As the Travis siblings stumble across the Boneyard, Loa freaks out when she identifies and relives the final moments of the fallen Horizon Bravo. Not to be confused with Horizon Brave, as the two kind of look the same too. Chaos Nemesis was one that we never found out anything about beyond the arm that it posthumously donated to Atlas Destroyer, as well as the fact that it participated in the Uprising War I was talking about just now. The other Mark IVs are kind of cameos too. Hydra Corinthian was an American Mark IV piloted by an all-female team of Kennedy LaRue and Stephanie Lanifer, stationed in Panama City and destroyed amongst unknown circumstances. It fought Category 4 Insurrector in the graphic novel Pacific Rim Amara alongside Striker Eureka. Mammoth Apostle was another American Jaeger that fought alongside Striker Eureka in Cushing, Malaysia, where it was destroyed. Again, not a whole lot of detail there and Nova Hyperion was a Mark IV piloted by two Olympic fencers that was stationed in Vladivostok until the Shatter Dome was closed in 2024. Same for Echo Sabre, which was a Japanese Jaeger that was stationed in Tokyo until being relocated to Sydney, Australia, and was involved in the Mutavor incident, where it was basically ripped in half and following catastrophic damage to the Compod, sank to the bottom of the sea. Okay, I think that about covers the Mark IVs. Let's swiftly move on to Mark V. Which for a while was a category of one because Striker Eureka was the last Jaeger to be constructed before the closure of the Jaeger program by the PPDC. To that date, it was the fastest and strongest of, of any Jaeger ever built and reportedly cost the Australian government 100 billion Australian dollars to make. It was worth every penny though as Striker would go on to get 11 confirmed Kaiju kills before its destruction in the Battle of the Breach. With a fighting style described as a dirty brawler which it probably got from its father and son pilot team Chuck and Herc Hansen, it has these T-16 angel wings that provide extra aerodynamic stability and help it remain on target should it decide to burst forward for a melee attack. It has brass knuckles that strengthen and add weight and ferocity to each and every punch, and its enormous sting blades, as well as being razor sharp, are apparently laced with, with carbon nanotubes that channel thermal energy to heat the blades to temps of over 300 degrees, which, like Gypsy's Plasma Caster, cauterize any kaiju wounds before it can bleed that horrific blue poison shit everywhere. Striker has a six-barreled anti-kaiju missile chest launcher with 18K stunner warheads that can stun and even in some cases kill a kaiju with a direct hit. You know what? I still don't believe that Chuck Hansen was drift compatible with Stack of Pentecost. Right here, we should probably talk about Striker Berserker, whose mark is never specified, but it's identical in appearance at least to Eureka. So chances are it's either a Mark V or a Mark VI. Now, Berserker had a total of 14 sorties and four confirmed kills, including Tarantulos, Hammerhorn, Frightcrawler, and at least one Acid Quill. You could add some Rippers to that if you wanted, but for me, they don't really count. Anyway, Berserker takes a beating at the start of the Black, but manages to hold together long enough for Herc to initiate the emergency measure known as the Black. It's then seen again in the graphic novel Blackout, which showed the events leading up to the Black, where Striker Berserker showed that it had a terrifying new weapon, a pair of blaze gauntlets that would superheat its hands to burn through kaiju flesh and bone. When Herc Hansen went rogue to try and locate his family, Vanguard Horizon was sent out to bring Striker Berserker in, which is when Berserker unleashed its newest addition, a pair of Herman Gottlieb's rocket pods mounted in Berserker's feet that were powerful, that were powerful enough to lift both Berserker and Vanguard Horizon high into the air. Next up, Bracer Phoenix, a Mark V that could still keep up with the Mark VI's from the Pacific Rim Uprising era, even though by that stage, it was an aging veteran. It was launched in 2025 and nicknamed the Shanghai Shield, so it was probably manufactured and or stationed in China. It's a heavily armored squat design built for the maximum protection of its three pilots, or two pilots and one gunner, I'm not sure. It was armed with a Vortex Cannon, anti-kaiju missile launchers, and later an M19 Morningstar, which we'll talk more about in a bit. 
but it's unique in that its vortex cannons can rotate around to the rear of the Jaeger and unleash major damage not only to an attacking kaiju, but probably half of the fucking city as well. We also know of Kronos Berserker, an Australian Jaeger constructed after the Battle of the Breach, participating in rebuilding programs and law enforcement. It's armed with two hammerhead missiles, one on each arm, hammerhead missiles being the most powerful non-nuclear warheads available at the time. This guy was also used in the training of cadets, with cadets taking their pilot examinations in it. They could even fire the hammerheads apparently, although the explosive payloads would have had to have been removed first, of course. Let's take a look at the Mark 6s, and of course, you have to start with Gypsy Avenger, don't you? After Gypsy Danger's heroic sacrifice, the PPDC immortalized the name by making the next incarnation the flagship of the Jaeger fleet. Launched in 2034, it was built in honor of Gypsy Danger and therefore closely followed its design template and has upgraded versions of its weaponry. For example, a new plasma caster, elbow rocket, and the chainsaws are pretty much identical but benefit from Avenger's faster and more athletic frame. It also has a gravity sling, which can manipulate a gravitational field around an object and pick it up and flail it around like crazy, and can therefore turn almost anything into a weapon. It had a missile launcher and dorsal wings that could also fire rockets, as well as rocket boosters in its feet that not only allow quicker movement across land, but really come into their own underwater, where they greatly enhance speed of movement. Its power core is also an upgrade on Gypsy Dangers, as it has a nuclear vortex turbine, as well as a smaller secondary turbine. It's said that each hour, these generate enough electricity to power the city of Chicago for an entire year. Of course, its main battle was against the fearsome Mega Kaiju that it defeated by supermanning itself into, destroying itself in the process. The next Mark VI would be Guardian Bravo, which was launched in 2033 and was designed for long range combat with burst foils upon its back, which are these jet like rockets that aid in the speed of its movements across distances. Like Gypsy Avenger, it has an energy whip called an Alex 16 whip which is made up of an unbreakable material and can deliver sustained shocks that may cause considerable damage to multiple objects or surfaces. It also has core salvo charges situated on either of its sides and arm-mounted guns on each arm, including machine gun-like ones on each arm and an energy firing type, at least on the left arm. It was heavily damaged in the final battle in Uprising, but wasn't destroyed. Titan Redeemer was built for brute force and armed with a seismic Morningstar, earning it a rep as the walking wrecking ball of the new fleet. Part of it lived on after it was destroyed by the hybrid Jaegers, as this Morningstar attack sphere was transplanted over to Brace of Phoenix. And you can see why, after all the whole of Titan Redeemer was designed around this fearsome ball of death, as the weapon was so heavy that it created an imbalance, so the whole of the chassis had to be counterweighted accordingly by giving it a wide T-shaped frame to spread the load. The Morningstar is 60 feet in diameter and is filled with a super dense liquid metal core to give it extra weight and therefore impact when hitting its target. Then on top of all of that, it has hundreds of spikes that fly out to rip into any armored opponents or to just mince its way into any thick kaiju hides. Titan's secondary weapons include arm-mounted cannons and an EMP mist grenade, which can disrupt electrical signals. After its destructions, its remains were seen in Pacific Rim the Black in the massive Jaeger graveyard alongside November Ajax and Valor Omega. Speaking of which, November Ajax was the coolest Jaeger to never have seen combat, restricted to the smallest of cameos at the beginning of Uprising. This Mark VI was assigned to law enforcement after the Battle of the Breach to look out for rogue Jaegers and keep tabs on the growing underground Jaeger fights. So it was clearly stripped of any major armaments as you probably shouldn't be apprehending criminals by cutting them with fang blades or liquefying them with plasma casters. Within its knuckles are electrified grappling hooks that can be fired out to pin and send volts of electricity through cables designed to disable rogue Jaegers 
who refused to come in quietly. And that's about all we see of it. According to Stephen S. DeKnight, there was a scene that was filmed but got cut where Ajax was destroyed by kaiju drones. I wonder if that's out there somewhere. Like, let me know in the comments if you've seen it. Personally, I really like November Ajax. I think it's the one that I would have personally chosen to see more of. Valor Omega's primary function was that of an emergency response unit specializing in evacuation missions and was designed to be able to enter dangerous or otherwise hazardous environments and hold up to 150 people. It had elaborate medical facilities and emergency supplies too. It could even purify seawater into drinking water should the need arise. And it also has reinforced shock suspenders for its knees to keep its human cargo as safe and stable as possible. Its offensive weapons are two arm-mounted Y-11 Revolution cannons, and it's a shame it didn't get fitted with an anti-decapitation device because, uh, POING! Murder Witch is a Mark VI that apparently appeared in Uprising, but if you blink, you'll miss it. All I've ever seen of it was this here in the background of this shot right here, but apparently it's one of these that's sent in as reinforcements when Obsidian Fury att attacked Sydney Harbour. It was also involved in the drone hybrid attack on Moyulan Shatter Dome, where it was destroyed. It had two large cannons on its back and a variety variety of close combat capabilities. There was always something that weirded me out about the name, you know, Murder Witch? Like, all the other Jaegers have got heroic names, you know, like Valiance Muck Superman or Courage Muck Baby Protector. I don't know why the Muck, like, they're not made at McDonald's or anything. Mark VII Sabre Athena was the most technologically advanced Jaeger ever produced, a design that prioritized speed and agility over everything else. But, you know, you've seen the movie, so you already know that. An experimental ultralight chassis enabled the use of high tensile muscle strands meaning that it was capable of feats of acrobatics never before seen in a Jaeger. It also had RG-28 accelerator limbs, as well as small jets designed into its arms and legs to aid with quick movements. All this means that it couldn't support the load of extra armor, so its pilots had to be extra quick to make sure the enemy didn't land a blow. So if the precursor suddenly came up with a super fast kaiju, you might as well leave this one at home in bed. Deliberately feminine in appearance, it became known as a blade dancer with its pair of ionic blades or laser swords, which could be combined into one larger weapon, as well as an N16 particle charger that's mounted on her forearm. Her chest design is reminiscent of a supercar with the xenon headlights and radiator grille, which earned her the nickname Lambo Tits. <laughs> no, I just uh, made that up. And her colors are just a big fuck you to the drab military tones of the other Jaegers. Saber met her end in the battle with the Mega Kaiju when an almighty tail swipe ripped her legs off. Then she got skewered by its twin tails, which were powered up by kinetic energy. And then she got tossed aside like a ragdoll. Boing. The ending of the movie didn't seem to be that bothered with like tying up any loose ends or anything, so we don't know whether she got repaired or not. But the fact that we've never seen any remains in any of the cemeteries, plus the fact that she was an experimental Jaeger that probably cost a whole lot of doubloons, makes me think that she probably was. Then we had Vanguard Horizon in Pacific Rim Blackout. Again, we didn't get to find out all that much about him, but he did save a falling helicopter in Striker Berserker's battle against Tarantulos before blasting the Cat 3, I think he was a Cat 3, with what looks like some energy ray. Zack. Tarantulos then seemed to get the better of him before Berserker intervened, activating his blaze gauntlets and burning into his skull. One thing I would say about Vanguard is that we do see him sprinting and jumping around quite a few times, so my suspicion is that he is one of the later marks. Probably not a 7, but I would guess maybe like a 6 or something like that. Paladin Tornado was another cameo in Blackout which helped strike a Berserker and Vanguard Horizon in the fight against Frightcrawler, Jawhide, and Hammerhorn. Again, fairly few details about this guy, but it does look like he has some serious shoulder weaponry and possibly abdominal mortars or rockets of some kind. Then there was Thunder Kinetic that had a huge hammer that was powerful enough to send an acid quill sprawling. As well as a concussive array of at least four concussion missiles, which he used to keep the acid quill away from a falling helicopter transport. He clobbered an acid quill so bad with that hammer that it sprayed kaiju blue everywhere that ate into his chassis and rendered him operative. Now I'm guessing he was salvageable after this. I think it probably ate through the compod and killed the pilots rather than completely totaled him. Obsidian Fury, probably named after the rare metal obsidian chrome that made up its shielding, was the original prototype drone Jaeger and was armed up to the eyeballs. With shoulder salvo rocket launchers and forearm mounted cannons and goddamn twin plasma swords, Newton Glazer designed this guy to be a force to be reckoned with. It had clawed fingers, it had forearm spikes, a particle charge in its chest, a frequency jammer in its spine. It was strong enough to punch Avenger off of its feet and lift it a few times too. So it must have been able to lift at least its own body weight. 
but the most dangerous thing about it was its connection to the precursor hive mind, with a kaiju secondary brain being interwoven with the drone systems. I got into big deets in this guy in this here video right here, which I will also link below. So if you want more details about Obsidian Fury, I've kind of gone over everything right there. Hunter Vertigo was piloted by husband and wife team Ford and Bryna Travis, Brina Travis even, and assisted in the evacuation of the Australian continent following the triggering of the Black. It's armed with two shoulder-mounted cryo cannons that can freeze kaiju to the point of shattering their bodies. In addition, Hunter Vertigo is seemingly powered by two nuclear turbines identical to the ones used by Gypsy Avenger. It's also armed with several nuclear missiles, even though Jaegers in general were designed to avoid the use of these kind of weapons. Probably because of the collateral damage evolved. I don't know, just speculating. It fought against the Bone Spur, at least one Acid Quill, and fought against Copperhead, even though that was eventually killed by Atlas and its Saber Chain. If I was gonna guess, I would put Hunter at either a Mark IV or possibly a Mark V. Hunter was eventually abandoned, but not completely destroyed, if my memory serves. Then we've got Valor Omega 2. Oh, I mean Zeus Marauder. Again, no Mark available for this guy, but my guess would be Mark IV or V although he is identical to Valor Amiga, who was a Mark VI. We saw Zeus Marauder, or Marauder Zeus, whatever you want to call him, aiding Hunter Vertigo in the mission to suppress any kaiju incursions and providing cover for the evacuation of Australian cities. He has a mean forearm-mounted chain gun on each arm that look like they absolutely decimate, but even that can't stop him from being skewered by a sneaky acid quill that gets the drop on him and sadly destroys him. Let's talk about the Drone Jaegers. Launched in 2035, these remote-controlled mechs designed by Shao Industries are designed to safeguard the lives of pilots and manufactured in large numbers so that larger areas of the Pacific could be protected from incursion. They had a chest-mounted energy beam plus sidewinder missiles, but they got even more dangerous when Newt Geisler used the tech to create a Kaiju Jaeger hybrid. Oh my god, what happened to me, Hans? His first success was Obsidian Fury, but he also created a number of drones that laid waste to to the Shatter Dome right here and headed out to the ocean to open several further breaches. They were eventually destroyed by a feedback loop created in part by Herman Gottlieb. More of them participated in a battle where they fought alongside Category 4 and 5 Kaiju, where they engaged November Ajax, Chaos Nemesis, Horizon Bravo, and a reconstructed Valor Omega and Titan Redeemer in what came to be known as the Uprising War. Drone Jaegers were again seen towards the end of the Black, insinuating that they had been more widely adopted into the PPDC's defense strategy. These ones in particular had been modified to be like these walking artillery cannons. Pacific Rim Aftermath had a few illegal mini Jaegers built by the mob for their underground Jaeger fighting scene, including this one called Enforcer that was piloted by former Vulcan Spectre pilot Josh Griffin. Enforcer had some kind of energy ray, as well as what he referred to as a harpoon, but he never got to fire it, as well as these nasty looking wrist blades. There was also a red one called Bruiser that had a cryo cannon that froze a bunch of innocent protesters and then shattered them to bits. When those two got put out of the game by the human engineered kaiju called Baby I think it was, the mob boss called Mechzar revealed that she had her own mini Jaeger called Atomic Queen. It also had retractable wrist blades and was destroyed when its power core overloaded, exploding before the sexy mob boss could eject. There were also a few smaller Jaegers or repurposed Jaegers that appeared in the Pacific Rim Amara miniseries as Amara delved into the underground Jaeger racing scene. Headhunter had tracks instead of wheels and could travel at quite some speed considering reaching speeds of up to 74 miles an hour. It's clearly made from the head of Romeo Blue, which in this case is kind of a hindrance as it tail as the tail fin catches on a bridge and snaps off, and the resulting crash winds up with Headhunter being disqualified from the race. Another featured is a Racknaut which as well as reaching surprising speeds considering it's a walker, can blast out a scrambler pulse that sent Headhunter crashing into a nearby house. Other Jaegers mentioned are Scuttler and Stingblades. Apex. Now I did a whole video on the origins of this guy, so I won't go over it too much here, but please do check out that video as this guy might well be the most powerful entity in the whole of the Pacific Rim universe. Now I wanted to talk about some of the game exclusive Jaegers that were made specifically for Breach Wars. I've already mentioned a few, like Atlas Psycho, but they were mentioned elsewhere in the continuity, so they're considered canon. Atlas Psycho, for example, being mentioned in the novelization. So the first one we haven't mentioned yet would be Panther Virtue, a Mark III. He's got quite a tribal looking forearm shield, don't you think? I can't actually think of another one that has a shield like this. Then there's Hades Counter-Strike, who must have the most evil sounding name ever. It's up there with Murder Witch anyway. He sometimes looks a lot like Ultraman to me. He has these big blades that remind me of Gigan's blades. We've got Iron Horus, Scorpion Marauder, and Shadow Cyclone. 
who has these two javelin sort of spike things that come out of his forearms that he stabs into an opponent and then lifts them off the ground. We've got Tiger Rush that has this really cool electricity sword. Midnight Winter who has these cool like Wolverine spike type things. Look at those. Brutal. There's Marauder Oblivion. There's something about his chest that looks really Veyron like to me. The Mark Sixes include Aurora Zeta, Brute Komodo, Quake Meridian, then this guy called Tomahawk Blaze, who's so square he looks like he was created in Minecraft. Apparently this guy's unrestricted, but you know, having never played the game, I have no idea what that means. Breach Wars also had a ton of, of Jaeger Kaiju hybrids, and the different varieties had different designations. Like this guy was the AH-1 Renegade. This one was the VH-1 Destroyer. Damn, look at that color scheme, it looks really cool. And so on and so forth. Right here, I wanted to talk about some of the fan-made Jaegers, because there were some amazing designs out there. Again, I'm just gonna skim over a few of them, otherwise, you know, we'll be here all day. If you really wanna see me go into some detail on these guys, you know, let me know in the comments below. Sierra Vigilant was a Mark V Canadian Jaeger built in Winnipeg. It had a forearm mounted blade or spike and was equipped with shoulder missile launchers and a plasma railgun. It also seemed to have really large boosters on its back, so I wonder if it could fly. There was also Mark V Ares Harbinger, designed by Robert Bartling, which had a high frequency blade, shoulder rockets, energy shroud emitters, Black Meteor was a German-built Mark II with a plasma caster, Titania Wolverine claws, and black hole cannons. It also had a black hole in its core, which allowed the Jaeger to suck in objects close to its body and fire them back out at its enemy. There was Bracer Phoenix Reforged that clearly had many, many, many adventures and many, many, many kills after it was refurbed. And it had a T8 extendable short sword added to its arsenal. Sigma Valiant was a Vietnamese Mark II that had two chainsaws, a chest Gatling gun, and shoulder missiles. It was retired in 2023 and later reactivated and upgraded to Mark V for the second Kaiju War. And after that, again, to Mark VI. And let's end by bringing the whole thing full circle with Brawler Yukon Reforged. To a spec that would categorize it as a Mark VII. It received upgraded Scorpion missiles, upgrades to its salvo launchers, and those arm blades only got all the more fearsome. All right, you guys, let's leave that there for now. Let me know about any that I've forgotten. I'm bound to have forgotten some. Enjoy the 10th anniversary of K-Day, and I'll see you very soon for the next one. Thank you very much for watching, and cheerio, bye.